Hello, you're listening to Got Clutter, Get Organized, a podcast that focuses on helping you create space to attract more money, love, and happiness in your life. I am your host, Janet M. Taylor. I want to say hello if you're a regular listener and welcome if you're listening for the very first time. I hope you are having a great week. And if you enjoy listening to this podcast, please leave a review so I can continue bringing you episodes each week. And someone has shared with me, can't wait to binge these episodes. So much motivation to get organized. Thank you, Stephanie K, for sharing that with me. That truly touches my heart. Well, in this episode, Ellen of Ellen Francis Designs will be sharing strategies on how to purge when we're over 50. But even if you're under 50, you can use some of these strategies as well. I will also be sharing my product at Repurpose and Book Suggestion for this week. And the question for the week is, when was the last time you did a major purge in your life? Was it last week, last month, last year, or you can't even remember? I would love for you to share via in the social media post, or you can feel free to leave me a message on the show page as well. Well, some reasons why people purge. Sometimes they're empty nesters. Sometimes they're retiring. And sometimes they've just decided they want to move into a smaller space, which is why Ellen of Ellen Francis Design has been in the design business for over 15 years. She began designing part-time, working full-time, and officially launched her business full-time in 2019. Ellen described as an artist, always has been a creative person at heart, and that adds pottery to all the things she loves. She began developing her eye for design at an early age. There was a running joke in her home that you should turn on the lights when you come in because chances are Ellen has rearranged the furniture again. She built her own Barbie dream house when she was 11 out of boxes and fabric scraps from her mom's sewing room. Ellen has designed homes and apartments in Philadelphia, suburbs, Miami, and California. She has successfully staged homes for sales, adding design and curb appeal, which has resulted in quick sales. Ellen specializes in small planning, uh, excuse me, of space planning of small spaces, or sometimes those difficultly shaped rooms, and we all know about those. Her keen eye and in-depth conversation with clients has resulted in beautifully designed functional spaces. Her motto is easy living for the soul. Ellen prides her design concepts with the skill of being a problem solver as well as having the ability to help clients discover their inner creativity with things they love to live with. Her love for design and function go hand in hand to create homes that are living proof that a house is a home. And in 2020, her designs were featured in apartment therapy, and she has been also a presenter for the Philadelphia Home and Garden Show. So I want you to sit back. I want you to listen to this conversation because Ellen truly goes in in depth of how we can purge whether you're over 50 or under 50. So get your tablets, get your notepads, and really glean from my conversation with Ellen. Ellen Francis Design. Well, listeners, it is the second half of 2020, and I know a lot of you thought about getting rid of stuff, downsizing, purging, but I decided to kind of focus on a specific group and those of us who are over 50 who really need to purge, and I decided to bring in an expert. I brought in Ellen Francis, who is an interior designer, and she really helps clients just truly enjoy their space and love coming home. So, Ellen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jen. I'm lo- I'm loving being here, and I look forward to helping as any possible way. So, before we get into, you know, how do we purge over fifty? Because it's a little hard for some of us. What made you decide to become an interior designer? Because I love hearing your story about just your journey of becoming, you know, doing what you really love to do. Well, thank you, Jan. When I was younger, I thought about home design and other ways to make your home more comfortable. 
I found it interesting, even at that young age, how people decorated their homes. I paid attention to the art and the colors and even the way rooms were laid out. My mom always had several magazine publications around the house that she would buy from from the grocery store, Family Circle, or others like Ebony, of course, in life. And they always had short articles in there about ways to make your home beautiful. And this was something that I've always liked, liked, but I didn't think of it as a job possibility then because it seemed like in the magazines, they were just encouraging homeowners to fix things up. But if that point, it became a passion of mine. And I come from a family of creatives. My mom and aunties were sewers, bakers, gardeners, crafters, and artists. So I got it honestly. And I loved changing the furniture around when I did chores. It was a pet peeve of mine. And it was a going ongoing joke in the house. Everyone said, you have to turn the lights on before you come home because Ellen may have rearranged the furniture. And I loved it. And when I moved out on my, on my own, I really uh, explored my talent for thrifting and making my own designs, cur- curtains, reupholstering furniture. I just developed a knack for learning all of that. And I started eventually decorating for my friends. Well, my academic path took a different turn, but home design and art were always my passion. One day I was helping a friend decorate her home and she offered to pay me. And that's when my confidence grew and I discovered a new path. I continued to work full-time in my career, but I took a few design courses here and there, but I'm basically self-taught and that's how it all began. I prefer to consider myself a life and home stylist because my design aesthetic is more than just making choices to fill a room. I'd like to design for living in your space, for making your home a place of comfort and joy. And that entails so many more things than just choosing furniture, placing it in a corner. My mantra truly is easy living for the soul. And that's how it all began. I mean, you really transformed my dining room. I mean, to a place where I enjoy sitting, I enjoy eating. There was one point where there was one, you know, I didn't really kind of face my windows, but now I enjoy, you know, just facing my windows when I have my meals because of the way you just like, just some simple things you did just to the window treatment. It was like, this is like transformational. And also just how, and and I like what you said because you were able to create my, like I call it, I think it's my photo gallery wall. And it was just like all of the wonderful photos of all the things that have happened in my life. And that's why I really enjoy going into that space. So, so Ellen, you know, when you get to a certain point over 50, like I am, and you have to purge, I think it's a little bit harder because you have all these things in your house. Um, you know you need to purge, but I think sometimes it's just that challenge because you start looking at things and you start remembering, oh, yeah, that trip. Oh, yeah, that, this, and all of it. Yes. Stuff. So how do you, how do you really purge? Why is it so hard? Well, Janet, that is so true. And what you're explaining and what you're expressing is something that everybody goes through at a certain point, some of us more than others. And I find this a really interesting question because we spend our lives acquiring the things that make us happy. They fill our house with memories and the rooms that house our precious possessions, our families. So while we're accumulating these things, and as you say, you like to look at the pictures on the wall, they remind you of the things that you do, you like to pull out items. We think we have everything we need, and the older we get, it seems the more we want or think we need to represent this life. Those are one of the reasons why it's harder the older you get to let things go up. The more successful we become, the more things we feel we need to represent our achievements, our travels our interests and our families, we somehow lose the perspective that we'll ever have enough. You just kind of accumulate or accumulate. Then when you get to a certain age, you feel like you kind of feel closed in sometimes and you start feeling like you're, you're, you start feeling a certain uh, um, feeling about things that are around you. You start feeling like, Oh, I can't get rid of that. Oh, this represents this. Well, the truth is that we identify so much with our surroundings in good ways and not such good ways that when the thought of parting with possessions is presented to us, we cringe. 
the thought of giving up the very things we work so hard to attain is gut wrenching. We feel that at a certain age, we have to hold on to the past. And let's face it, the older we get, the less time we have in front of us. So the past is a pretty good place to be sometimes. And we hope, well, we hold on to these things. We really don't think about them as a burden, you know, much like you don't think about your kids as a burden, but possessions can be, which is why we have broached this topic. There are many times when you try to unload things, then you feel like you'll miss them. So you put them back in the box, you put them back in the room. And we're a consumer society. We haven't not quite grasped the notion that loss, that to lose some of the possessions will free up our time and our energy to, to enjoy other interests and, and, and don't get involved in collecting more things. We forget that when we're out of here, this is going to be our family's responsibility to discard these possessions. And they may not have the meaning to them that they have to us. And then what do we do? We impose that guilt on them. So instead of, instead of thinking, this is really something that I need to do, it just keeps burdening us and burdening us. And in most cases, we also pass those feelings that the possessions mean, thing, mean things to us, especially if that person you loved once owned them, which is another reason why it's hard to, to purge. We hold on to the lives of those we love them, as, who love, who, who we love, who possess those things we attach sentimental value to things we wore at certain times things we bought when we experienced situations we attach memories to items that are otherwise useless then there's the collectors these are the things that we associate with some of our passions or the organizations we belong to we've all gone to those those conventions you grab a handful of pens you grab all these mantras from these companies and you come home and you think, oh yeah, these are things that are going to be forever in my life. And then you look up and you have so many on your refrigerator, on in, in your books, in your car. At a certain point, we start letting these things take over our lives. And these things are associated with, you know, our passions and, and organizations that we belong to. And then we think the good times we have we have a tendency to want something tangible to relate to. But if we all dig deep, there are things that we can let go of as we grow older, if we really consider how they hold space. The hard part is to realize that we really don't need as much as we accumulate, and we are all guilty of this. The sooner that you realize that even in your home, you know, people that rent a storage space, You're actually paying real estate for these things in your home. And, you know, we don't want to get into a position where we're on the uh, reality show, The Hoarders. Sure, many people look at that and think, oh, gosh, I'm never going to get there. But I'm sure if you open a few of your closets in your home, you would think that. But because they're behind closed doors and because you happen to have a, a location where you can hide these things, you don't readily think about it. And sometimes when we grow older, too, we we take on the responsibility of people, but sometimes we take on the responsibility of possessions. And again, that's another reason why we're. It's so hard for us to let go of them. When you were talking, I was thinking, okay, I got to get rid of this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. <laughs> you know, and you're right. It's like you you accumulate all that stuff, and then you just start thinking about all the things, the memories attached to it, and you don't want to let it go. I mean, which is why a lot of times when I have something, I'm like, I take a picture and I'm like, okay, Ellen, do I need to keep this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excuse me. And she'll say, no. So how do we release the stuff and let it go? This is probably the most difficult task to start. And it shouldn't be taken on lightly. It seems like it should be easy. And a lot of professionals tend to make you feel like it should be easy. But as you and I know all too well, it's a psychological dilemma that can haunt you and render you helpless. So my advice is to first decide why you need to purge. Decide if it's what you want and need or is something, or someone else prompting you to do this. Pressure from others is never a good starting point because these are personal feelings that you have. 
And other people can't really relate to that. Sometimes people have all good intentions of being able to help you let go. But again, this is something that you have to consider before you even start doing this. And I don't think a lot of people think of it as a psychological decision, but it is. You have to decide if you want or need to really go, you know, pass these things on. Is it the space that you need? Are you moving to another uh, chapter in your life? But the fact that you've gotten to a point where you need to purge because you have so many possessions is and of itself daunting. So next, decide if you need help. And I'm not talking about, as I said, a good intention friend who will be there just helping you get rid of things without understanding their meaning. That's what most people think is good that you have, but it can have a reverse effect and it can really put you in a state of shock. So my advice is you need a professional help, which is always my first recommendation. Um, Now you can get a consultation from a professional or you can actually have a professional actually do the work for you, but a consultation is a start. Um, Just so you can really assess what needs to be done, how best to handle your individual situation. All situations are never the same, but all situations involve making decisions that you may not have thought about. Again, you and your family have spent many years accumulating these things, and now you need to discard them. That's, that's, that's a hard point to get to. And I'm sure there are those who simply, who simply can just purge and won't flinch a lick about what they've got to let go of. That's not who this is for. This is advice to help with a painful transition. Once you have, once you have met with a professional, and make a decision or make the decision on your own, then you need to map out a strategy that will help not overburden you and that you will, and that will make you feel, won't make you feel guilty for wanting to purge. When you're clear about why, then the next step is to tackle one space or closet at a time. Take a couple of weekends, set up a staging area in a room or space that you have that you're not using too much. You don't want to pressure yourself to be clearing the space out quickly uh, because you need to use it. So my best advice is to use an area, as I said, where you don't, um, where you're not using it often. The next few steps are strategic and all help and, and they all help you focus. At this point, you can actually pull things out, look through them because you probably haven't in a while make tentative decisions, move along at a steady pace, go back a couple of times, then go in for the purge. And at that point, that's when the strategy really comes into play. You set up about three or four bags or boxes. You label them, keep, donate, and donate can mean donate to an organization, give to your family or friends, give your kids all those papers and things you were saving from their childhood. They may want them. They may have kids. Your friends may have been goggling something that you that you can pass on to them and they will use. A bag for trash. We all have got that. You know, you go through things, you're like, why am I keeping it? It's ripped. It's, it's broken. It's this, it's that. And then the fourth one would be either to consign or do you to do a garage sale or a yard sale. Once you've made the decision to donate or to trash, take those bags or boxes out of the house with you immediately. I've helped, and you have too, Jan, and I know we've helped people to go through purging, and we've left and said, okay, we'll take it with you. No, 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 I'll take it. I'll get my husband to take it out, and you come back days later to finish the job, and they've set them back up again because it's just a hard decision. So take it out of the house with you immediately. Put it in your car. Go donate it. Put it in the trash some some place where you're not looking at it. Now, this is not an easy process for all. But once you made the decision to purge, You'll feel the weight has been lifted. You'll have headspace to live the next chapter of your life on different terms. Sure, you'll keep a lot, but you'll release more than you physically see. And as we get into the next chapter of our lives, having lived the life we have, good, bad, with or without regrets, you can try to be sure that the next chapter will be different. And at this point, you can vow to pay more attention to the things that you don't have to purge so much. 
You'll have more time to spend with family, friends that you cherish instead of the things that remind you of them. You'll have more headspace to make new friends if that's what you want. Begin a new chapter with less baggage than you left the last one with. These are really important things to think about as you purge, before you purge, because I th- I think, of course, we place too much attachment on our things, and we're both guilty of that. Look, I have a whole closet full of things of my mother's that in stages I'm releasing. Mm-hmm. And a professional will also help you decide if you have a certain item that you loved of your uh, family, your mom a coat or a dress or something there are many different things you can do with those you can make a pillow out of them you can make some type of a little toy a a little christmas ornament something with the with the fabric on it you can um there's even art you can do i do as a type of art where it's a collage where you do pictures and you do patterns. You can take patterns from different uh, times in your life, of things that you're saving. Again, you can get a professional help. This isn't something you have to do. I certainly don't want to help create another crafting corner for people to, to start <laughs> collecting things and say, oh, I want to make something out of this. But it's just something you can do to help relieve that pressure of, oh, I don't want to let this go. It reminds me of the birthday party that I had with my mother. I had this this Christmas card from my grandfather. There's things you can do, and framing things is a good idea as well. And also, and you know, I was listening to you, and you're right, Ellen. You do need a professional because when you see things, it's differently. You can, you know, somebody will sit down and talk with you and say, this is the vision I have. And then you could see what pieces will work and won't. And even like you said, there are sometimes you can reuse things because I had never thought of taking my mother's trunk, who Ellen knows I do not want to get rid of. And she's like, Janet, just use the coffee table. And I was like, oh, yeah, but also it could be storage, too, because it's a lot of space in there. So you come with a whole different perspective. And you're right. There's stuff in here that we just need to release and let go. And I know, I mean, you know, listeners, I have stuff in here I need to release and let go. And that's why a lot of times I'll have a vision in mind and I'll be like, and I'll take a picture. Okay, Ellen, do you think I should keep this or not? And she'll say, yeah, keep this. Mm, You might want to think about getting rid of that. So a professional truly, truly helps. So Ellen. That's right. You know, how do you, you know, because you're working with clients and of course I know you, you love to travel and enjoy life now that you're over 50. How do you just manage to stay organized? Well, when you discover this age, old 11, let me know because I haven't <laughs> discovered how to do this either. <laughs> but really staying organized is not always what it's cracked up to be and yes i know that you you are the master janet of making things look wonderful uh you your your projects and your organization challenges are great you post the most wonderful ideas but it's sometimes can be a little challenging for people when they're thinking about, oh my goodness, I've got to look like this all the time. So they think I'm never going to start. And then they look, and then if a a professional may come in and set them up, they don't want to touch anything on there. They They think they're not supposed to use anything anymore. But the reality is it's an ongoing process. Just like making changes when you, to your eating plan or your diet and your health, it's an ongoing process that it'll become as simple as you make it. The important thing is to set yourself up for success. Again, it's just like eating habits. Uh, It's all about prepping. And so is organizing. Set yourself up for success by creating systems that actually work for you, your family, your needs, and your lifestyle. One of the worst things you can do is go on a shopping spree and buy all the cute organization gadgets and containers that look really good and you've seen them someplace else, this can in the end ultimately create more clutter for you and be a waste of money because you really don't understand how your space functions. So also don't get pulled in by the YouTube videos that will try to help you set up organization. It's again, not personalizing it in your space. You have to, you 
you have to assess what you have left after your purge and make the decision about how your space functions for you, what's important in those spaces for you. If you have a desk area, you have to decide how do you use your um, your desk? How are you using, how, how would you like to store things? How um, How is your kitchen function for you? Where are your tools? Are they accessible in the drawers that you need? Or do you have to go through drawers and dig through them? So these are things that are really, really important. Um, when, you're, when, you're, when you establish a plan, you basically want to encompass a place for everything and then make it your goal to only place those things in those spaces. Uh, when I was a potter at a studio, and, and a lot of people do this in their workspace, in their workshops, they actually hang the piece on the wall and circle it. They will, they will outline it with a, with a magic marker so that they know that piece goes there. That tool goes in that space. So, of course, you may not be able to do that in a lot of your areas, but that's the concept to be able to know, no, this doesn't go here. This goes here. And it can be, it can be challenging when you have small spaces. But again, that's what the containers are for. But you have to know these are the containers that I specifically want for this space. Uh, you'll need a few minutes every day or every other day to focus on these things. But again, you won't reach perfection. There's no such thing as perfection. Staying organized means to set your goals and not make it so tedious that you'll never want to do it. Once you see the space in an orderly manner, that's what you'll achieve. That's what you'll that's what your goal will be. Once you decide to live a healthier, organized life, that's what your aim will be. And even if you only ha- even if you only have one day a week, take that time. The ideal thing would be to set aside five, ten minutes a day. It'll make it easier on you for your end of the week work or cleaning or whatever. But again, and, and we also think sometimes 10 or 15 minutes, I don't have that, but you do. 10 or 15 minutes is on the way to the bathroom, up, going up the steps, on the way to bed at night, while you're cleaning the dishes, while you're filling the dishwasher. Oh, these things over here need to be, oh, this book doesn't belong here. Let's get the kids together. And one of the things too in families is to teach these habits to your kids. Teach your these habits to your family as a whole. They'll feel more comfortable. Again, it's not something that you're going to do all the time. It's not perfection. But this is a way to basically keep the organization down in your home. And it will also help with purging. Because when you think about the space and you think about what it is you want in this space, you start bringing more things in into this space. You'll start feeling as though this is not right. This isn't what I intended to do. And that takes on the meaning that I love is when you bring one thing out, you take one thing. When you bring one thing into your home, take one thing out. Get get in the habit of doing that. It sounds hard because you're thinking, well, I don't want to get rid of things. Well, sometimes you do. Mm-hmm. One thing is for sure. If it stresses you, you won't do it. So it has to be something. Again, it's like meal prepping. Prep yourself up to do it. If it's important to you, you like the way it looks, you like the freedom that it gives you, the mind space that it that it allows you to have, you're going to stick with it. And you're right. And I like what you said, Ellen, about those fancy containers. And I think the one thing people have to understand is it's important to purge before you purchase. Now, a professional can go in and say, oh, you need this, this, and this, and this. But a lot of times you need to get rid of stuff because maybe you'll only need half of what you actually thought. So yes. purging before you purchase, I like that, you know, making sure you stay, you know, t- schedule time to do it, but also something you said made me think about, you know, a situation. So I have to go to an event soon and I was thinking, okay, do I need a new outfit? You know, it's been a couple of years since I've really been out Can I fit anything? <laughs> and I thought about it. I said, you know, what? I have a black dress, but I've got a lot of jewelry. I am going to just figure out how to accessorize that black dress because I'm not bringing anything else in this house. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. So you and one of my uh, one of my other tips is when you're when it kind of goes back to the last uh, item we were talking about. If you do have a professional helping you, you have to go along with them because it's not you know I've watched a lot of television shows and 
videos where you leave the house, the professional sets up the organization, you come back and you go, oh, this is wonderful. Again, they're setting it up the way they think it should work and and function. You have to be there with them to say, nope, that's not going to work. It's too low for me to reach. It's too low for my children to reach. Uh, I'm left-handed. I don't go in that direction. And even if you tell them that before, it's still something you need to be there because you have to have a feel of it. It is honestly like going to the store, trying on an outfit, trying on shoes, walking in them for a minute and saying, yeah, I like this. Okay. I can live with this. It's very important. The success of the purge and the success of staying organized weighs heavily on you being there and actually understanding how it's going to function for you. And sometimes with the kids, kids, are, kids have their own spaces and they have their own ideas about how they want things to function. Your husband, your family, whoever else you live with, your mom, everyone has their own ideas about the comfort of a function. And that is very important. Again, it's not going to work on a daily basis if you don't have all these things in place. And of course, my main idea is it has to look beautiful, aesthetically beautiful. You have to have a peaceful feeling, just like a new outfit. You have to feel like, oh, this looks so nice. You want to be in the space. You don't want to, oh, it looks great. I'm not going to sit in here. That's, this isn't the day of that living room or that area that you don't sit in that you just like to look at. No, we live in our homes. We live in our, you pay, you're paying real estate, high real estate for every room, live in it and live in it comfortably and beautifully. And, you know, and it's so true because I'll never forget one time a friend showed me his kitchen and how he organized his, his um, cooking utensils and it looks so nice on the wall. They happened to be a little high and people were just like, oh, that just doesn't function and everything. I said, the man is six, <laughs> three. Right. <laughs> And I said, it functions fine for him. Yes. So I'm glad you really um, stressed that. So Ellen, it has truly been a joy. It's always a joy to talk to you and actually hang out with you too when we do get that chance. So how can listeners get in contact with you? Well, thank you, Janet. It's been a pleasure talking with you too. And I'm always happy to help you and help your listeners get their lives together. I can be easily reached on Instagram Ellen Francis Designs is my Instagram page. Um, my website is ellenfrancisdesigns.com. And my phone number is on both of them. It's 484-343-5195. Uh, please reach out to me. I would love to talk to you and, and discuss your needs. I offer a 15-minute discovery chart, a call, which is something that we will... Um, get to know each other, feel comfortable about what the project you're working on is and go from there. It should always be an easy process. It should always be reachable. Design and organization should be reachable and affordable for everyone. I love that. And of course, listeners, you know, I'll have a direct link to Ellen's Instagram as well as her website on the show page. So Ellen, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you, Janet. Talk to you soon. So, what did you take away from my conversation with Ellen? What is the one thing that after listening to the conversation that you realize, you know what, I need to purge and I need to let go? And that is a conversation that you need to listen to over and over again. And you also need to share it with family and friends who you know may be in need of some purging in their space and in their life. Well, now it's time for Taylor's Tip Time. And this is just purging from my organizing perspective. You need to decide on the area and the goal of the space. So if you realize you need to purge, what is going to be the goal of the space? Is it going to be a home office? Is it going to be a craft room? Is it going to be a guest bedroom? Schedule the time. So now that you know the goal of the space, when do you realistically have time to work on the project? Maybe it may not be a coming weekend, but maybe in a month you will really have time to dedicate to really get next space organized and purging. Three, get those supplies, trash bags. Maybe you want a donation box or bag. You know, you need a container for recycling things, depending on the area. And number four, just do it. 
And number five, donate as much as you can. And, you know, also making sure that when you donate, you actively put that in your schedule so you can do it. And it's not just sitting around and you're looking at it months and weeks and months later. And also, depending on your community, and I know in my community, when people have stuff they want to get rid of, they sometimes put a little note on it free, put it outside, and somebody who truly could use it just walks by or either drives by and just take it. So think about that as well. So have you been working on getting organized and feel overwhelmed? Are you challenged by managing your time between work, home, and your life? Do you want to organize your life? Let's talk so I can help you. I'll work with clients to guide them from start to finish by providing them with the details needed to clear the clutter and get organized without feeling overwhelmed and stressed. I do this through virtual sessions. I've helped many clients. You know, they show me the space and I give them a strategy on what to tackle, what to get rid of, what to donate. Go to my contact page and schedule a free 15-minute session. Take the steps necessary to create the life you want and start by sewing, doing something today. And click the link in the show page. So, of course, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for following me on social media, for your likes, your retweets, and your sharing. Please continue to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest. And of course, you know, I have pages where um, I have boards actually on Pinterest that, you know, help you live a simple life, help you live an organized life and so much more. And of course, make sure you check out my YouTube channel as well, because I've got some wonderful conversations just about how to truly live that organized life as well. So be sure to check it out and subscribe. If you're thinking of getting your life organized, don't get overwhelmed, ladies. Join my Facebook group, Living Life Totally Organized. It's a community of women supporting each other on their journey to living life that is totally organized, and it's free to join. I love the group because recently there were, just yesterday, I saw several questions. So later on today, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to respond to each one of those questions individually. And make sure that, um, you know, and that's the kind of interaction I like in my Facebook group. It's more personal. And also, it allows people a really safe space to share what their anxieties are, what their challenges are, and also to get the support from other people who are going through the same thing. So check it out. It's free. So please join us. We'd love to have you. Well, do you know what time it is? It is Toss It Tuesday time. It is Toss It Tuesday. And again, I'm going to suggest that you go through a box, a container, a drawer that you haven't touched in months. So, you know, what? it could be just a drawer. Or maybe, you know what, it could be the, the, the container that you have your pens and pencils. You keep putting those, you know, sometimes we have things in there that need to be tossed. It could be a desk drawer. It could be a drawer in the kitchen. Maybe there's some utensils that, you know, you thought you were going to use, but now you're cooking and your lifestyle is so different. You don't need them anymore. Start purging some things. My app suggestion for this week is Task Rabbit. Everyday life made easier. When life gets busy, you don't have to tackle it alone. Get time back for what you love without breaking the bank. Choose your tasker by review, skills, and price. Schedule when it works for you as early as you know today, depending on what time it is. Check, pay, tip, and review all through one platform. My product suggestion for this week is command strips, command hooks. Of course, you can find them in my Amazon shop. And they're wonderful because they can really transform a space and make it more organized. You can hang a hook in the bathroom and boom, your towels have some place to go. You can hang a hook by the door. You got a place for your key. Hang a hook on the back of the door. You could possibly, you know, hang a cap or something else. So think about that. My repurpose suggestion for this week is make transforming old lamps. There's so many things you can do with an old lamp. So check out my Pinterest board for repurpose. I have repurposed them. Repurpose, repurpose the office, repurpose the garden. Sometimes you have those things that maybe you want to purge, like some old boots that are leaky. 
and repurpose them in the garden. My book suggestion for this week is Big Style and Small Spaces, Easy DIY Projects to Add Designer Details to Your Apartment, Console, or Urban Home. And my quote for this week is, my space is small and my life is big. And that's by Ram Hill. My space is small, but my life is big. We all have heard stories of people that have maybe just downsized and purged or living in a small square footage, maybe have gotten a, a one of those RVs or maybe just gotten a tiny home. And they may have a small space, but they're living a big life. And think about that. I'm not necessarily suggesting that you move, but maybe just getting rid of some things and really enjoying life a little bit more. Well, I want to thank you for listening and be sure to share this podcast with your family, your friends, and on your social media network. And again, let me know you enjoy listening to this podcast by leaving a review and be sure to visit my website at www.janetmtaylor.com. And until next time, I want you to have a clutter-free day. But most of all, have an organized week. Organization is the quintessential element of a clutter-free life. Join me as we take this journey together. Along the way, we will find the necessary answers to your organizing dilemmas. My name is Janet M. Taylor, and you are listening to Got Clutter? Get Organized.